Hi, I'm Roger, a gadget guy. One of the reasons that people moved away from the old style stereo receivers with their timeless good looks and gorgeous sound quality and went to a modern big black box is because those old receivers didn't have the convenience of a remote control. Now you can have the best of both worlds and I'm going to show you how. I won't be making any modifications at all to the receiver itself. The trick to getting the remote control to work is which inputs and outputs to use for the device that I'm about to show you. In this system, the remote control will work for all sources, including the FM radio and a turntable. To do justice to a classic like this, I'm gonna show you a really high quality solution that best preserves the kind of sound that these beauties are capable of. So I hunted high and low for a remote volume control. And this company, MCM Custom Audio, is the only one that I've found. MCM Custom Audio, I do a lot of professional audio gear, uh, which is one of the reasons I hadn't heard of them before. But you can't find this on Amazon or in Walmart. There's only a couple of places I've seen where you can get this box. One of them is Newark Electronics. There is one other site, but it's twice as expensive. Now, Newark generally deal with businesses rather than individuals, but they will take a credit card or PayPal, and I will leave a link to this device on their site in the description. I was clued into this by another YouTuber, Kevin of Skylabs Audio, Kevin's channel is my favorite YouTube channel for vintage audio, so check it out. To show you all the connections, I removed the speaker wires and the FM antenna, just so I don't confuse things with extra wires. This remote volume control has two sets of RCA connectors on the back. The uncontrolled audio goes into the input, and the volume controlled signal comes out of the connectors labeled output. To connect this up, we just plug an RCA cable into the output, and that goes into the input labeled either tape play or tape in, like so. And then, the connections labeled input are connected to either tape record or tape out, depending on how they've labeled your particular receiver. Then all you have to do is connect the power here and it's best to plug this into a switched power strip so you can turn it on and off. Some receivers have a switched outlet on the back, which would be ideal, but this one doesn't. So I have a little hack for hooking up a CD player to an old receiver because the output of CD players is generally a lot higher than the level from the record player. And that means you get an annoying shift in volume when you switch from one to the other. To avoid that, I use a variable volume control on the input that a CD player is connected to. And this one is best set with the line on the knob lined up with the in. That's about halfway around the rotation. And that gives me about the same level on the CD player as I get on the record player. So I connect the input of this volume control to the CD player and the output goes to aux. And then I'll just plug the record player in. This turntable doesn't have a preamp in it like most older turntables because these old vintage receivers all had phono preamps built in. This remote control will reduce the volume, not increase it. So what you have to do first, if you want to use it, is to set the standard volume control. The right position for this knob is with the tape monitor switch out, you want that knob to be as loud as you would ever want to listen to the music. 
Now, since we've connected this volume control between the tape output and the tape input, it controls the volume on any source provided you have the tape monitor button pushed in or the tape monitor selected. So to use the remote control for volume, you need to have this tape button on the tape setting, which is pushed in on this receiver. For the demonstration I'm about to do, I'm going to use a music streamer instead of a CD player. This is a, a Rillic S10, and I'll be playing the music from my phone to this streamer. And now let's go play some music. Now I'm ready to demonstrate this remote control on three inputs. And I have a mute button, a volume down button, and a volume up button on this remote. So first, I'm going to go to FM radio. The country under anti-black race and anti-black And as you can see, the remote works uh, well, perfectly. Now it's muted. Now I'm going to play some music from Spotify. And I'm going to use a playlist from Audio Library Plus who've put a lot of royalty-free music on Spotify for creators to use. So I will do that now. Go to Spotify and hit a song. And you can see that it's muted. So I will unmute. Turn up the volume. I can pause that now. So you can see I have used the streamer to connect my phone to the receiver, but I have control of the volume through the same controller that I use for the FM radio. And lastly, I'm gonna show an LP record. Now I don't have any royalty free music on LP, so I'm gonna use a test record. And what you're gonna hear is just a single tone. And you can tell I can turn the volume up. And the volume down. And mute. So that's it. You have remote control of the volume and mute on all three sources feeding audio to this receiver. If you like this video and found it helpful, then give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you buy any of the products in the links in the description, it won't cost you any more, but it will help to support the channel and is really appreciated. That's all I had for today. Thanks so much for watching.